Hello and welcome to CNN 10, where we tell you the what, letting you decide what to think. I'm Coy. Hope you're off to a magnificent Monday, that you had a wonderful holiday weekend. We're so happy to be right back here with you. Let's start today talking about electronics. Last week, we explored the growing challenge of e-waste as there's a major effort underway to find new ways to manage all of the growing piles of electronic device garbage and leftovers. But that was only part of the story because at the very same time, the demand for computer chips continues to rise, and there's one company making more of them than anyone else. Located in Taiwan, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is one of the world's most secretive tech companies. CNN's Will Ripley recently gained rare access to the training facility to uncover what it takes to work there and how they create these modern day chips that run our smartphones, laptops, and cars. And TMSC is expanding its operations as demand for its advanced chips continues to boom. CNN's Will Ripley has more. This is Taiwan's epicenter of technological revolution, where precision meets innovation and tiny chips power big dreams. This is TSMC, Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company, commanding more than 50% of the global market, producing more than 90% of the world's most advanced chips. To say it's difficult to gain access to Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company would be the understatement of the year, or maybe two years, because that's about how long it's taken my team and I to get permission to come here. Behind these walls, some of the world's most advanced, highly secretive technology. It's so secret, you have to check your phone, your laptop, anything that emits a signal just to walk through the door. As demand for AI-driven technologies soars, TSMC is the go-to global manufacturer, sending stocks skyrocketing. The company's workforce, 77,000 strong and growing. A far cry from its humble beginnings in 1987, says the senior vice president of human resources, Laura Ho. What is it like to run HR for what is arguably the most important company in the world right now? I think now HR is very different than the HR then because we are fast expanding our global footprint. TSMC says it needs to hire thousands of new employees over the next few years to fill chip factories, or fabs, under construction right now across Taiwan and around the world. Last month, TSMC opened its first fab in Kumamoto, Japan, with the help of billions of dollars in government subsidies. They're also building new fabs in Dresden, Germany, and Phoenix, Arizona. What's the most challenging location where you're trying to build a factory right now? I think Arizona is, is the most difficult. Regulations and the culture is different. We have to adjust to local culture and different employees. Why the decision to do the more advanced technology in Arizona? Our leading age customers are mostly American companies. So to serve their need in their home country, that's the objective. That Arizona fab is facing chronic delays. We need some more help with it, though, for sure. The price tag, skyrocketing. Making chips outside of Taiwan and making them profitable will likely require huge government subsidies. They estimated the uh, cost in the U.S. compared with Taiwan is about 40 percent more expensive. But right now, because of the inflation and all these kind of issues, right now they think it's probably two times or three times more expensive. TSMC's overseas expansion must overcome massive hurdles, an expansion world leaders say is necessary to protect the global chip supply chain from potentially disastrous disruptions. We got a taste of that during the pandemic. Months-long waits for new phones, laptops, and other tech. Any major disruption could mean waiting years for cutting-edge tech. Taiwan is a volcanic island prone to earthquakes, typhoons, and other natural disasters. This earthquake, for example, uh, earthquake, uh, I think all our engineer engineer knows they need to go back to the the company soon. Doesn't matter what time it is, if it's midnight, they will come back. Perhaps the biggest threat to TSMC's supply chain, also one of its biggest customers, rising tensions with China. The company's stock is surging anyway, as other nations scramble to catch up with Taiwan. I don't think it would take away the strength because uh, we are still very highly concentrated in Taiwan and the most leading age technology will absolutely starting from Taiwan. Beyond its core semiconductor business, TSMC is exploring new frontiers in advanced packaging, paving the way for enhanced processing power and energy efficiency. 
pushing the boundaries of what's possible in today's fast-moving world of tech. Will Ripley, CNN, Taichung, Taiwan. 10-second trivia. What event made baseball history in 1903? First interleague game, first night game, first World Series, first perfect game. Batter up. In 1903, the Boston Americans defeated the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first ever World Series. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks, folks. Baseball season is officially underway, and for today's story, getting a 10 out of 10, we're looking at a different kind of baseball. Have you ever heard of the Savannah Bananas? They're an exhibition baseball team that thought baseball was ripe for some change, and they peeled back what they called the boring bites and pitched an entirely new game. It's called Banana Ball. Our Andy Scholes is on the story. Bats on fire. Swinging a hot stick. Players on stilts. Backflip catches. The best backflip we've ever seen. And dancing. Lots and lots of dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Savannah Bananas have exploded in popularity since their inception in 2016, to the point now where they are selling out major league ballparks. When we first started, we only sold a handful of tickets. And so we were just trying to make sure ba baseball or banana ball could eventually work in Savannah. And now to see it with, you know, wait list over 2 million people and selling out major league stadiums and a million fans this year. I don't think anyone yeah. could have written this up. Bananas owner Jesse Cole and his wife Emily put everything they had into starting the Bananas with the mission to make baseball fun. They have certainly done that. He clears Kellogg! Back up the middle, it's a base hit! So much fun, getting a ticket to see the Savannah Bananas is as tough as a Taylor Swift concert with hundreds of thousands of people on the wait list. This is Banana Ball! The team now has more than 8 million followers on TikTok, and one of their stars, Jackson Olsen, well, he himself has more TikTok followers than any major league team. Pretty crazy. I started it for fun, and I'm still doing it for fun, and I think that's probably probably a reason why. Uh, I've done it every day for almost three years now, and I'm loving it more every day. So to be a banana, what's more important? Is it being able to dance or play baseball? Really nice dance. He gets the outside corner. I think you got to have a great mix of both because all these guys out here have such amazing personalities and are outside of the box, but they also can play really well. Some of the most talented guys from all over the country, D1 level, some ex-pros, man, we're all coming fire and guns blazing. These guys are tremendously skilled. I mean, they've all, many of them play professional baseball from first round draft picks to mm -hmm. top, you know, top recruits. And then now they can also dance or they can do back flips yeah. or they can do all that. And I think that's really important. You have to be able to entertain. And you know, the name of our company is Fans First Entertainment. Our mission is Fans First Entertain Always. You got to be able to entertain. So if you can just play ball, you might not be a great fit for us. Now the bananas play by their own rules known as banana ball, and there are so many fun quirks, including the batter can steal first base at any point during an at bat, and if a fan catches a foul ball, it's an out. Foul caught by a fan, and that's your ball game. That is, it's like the cherry on top of the cake, you know. When a fan gets to be a part of our show, actually coming onto the field, we're celebrating with them because they just made one of the biggest plays of the whole game. As soon as this ball is hit over the net, it's more intense than it is when it's hit in fair play because we're like, holy cow, Like a fan has a chance to catch this. The whole crowd is zoomed in on it. It's a special moment. It's by far my favorite rule. Now watching the bananas is a blast, but could I be a banana? Oh, wow. <laughs> Not even close. I'll stick to being a fan. Andy. Busting out the dance moves. I see you, buddy. All right, superstars, that's all we have time for for today. Let's head on over to Livingston Middle School in California for a shout out today. How you doing, Cougars? Rise up. And to all the senators out at Carson High School in Nevada, keep shining. Thanks for being with us. You rock. Now, this is going to be tough. I have some news about the show. Today was my last day. I've loved being part of this show so much that it can't be my last day. Happy April Fools, everybody. My favorite holiday of the year. Keep your head on a swivel. Trust no one. See you tomorrow. I'm Koi, and we are CNN 10.